Coming up today on this week's episode, Hideo Kojima announces that he has another game to announce next year, the PlayStation Division is hiring Android engineers, PS3 is finally getting the Netflix app that we've all been waiting for, Microsoft still yet again feels that Blu-ray is unneeded, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood beta announced for PlayStation Plus members, another Sony exclusive delayed, then I have my review of the HTC Evo Otterbox Commuter Series case along with Castle Crashers available on both the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live, then my topic of the week which is PlayStation Droidable, a reality, what really grinds my gears in the TJ Weekly Recap. This is Nick's Gaming View. How's it going, gamers? Hideo Kojima just announced on Twitter this past week that, quote, I think it would be nice if next year I can do not just editing, but introduce my own new game, end quote. So there's no information as far as what this game is. A whole lot of people are assuming it's Metal Gear Solid 5, but there's no concrete evidence of that. Metal Gear Solid Rising is coming out. It's coming from the same studio, but it's not going to have Kojima's mind behind it. And that's what makes most of the Metal Gear Solid games the experience that they are. So we'll definitely have to wait and see what happens, but I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on that. The PlayStation division is now hiring Android engineers, exactly what they're looking for. Quote, experience in mobile development, specifically Android is a plus, as well as knowledgeable experience of online gaming, end quote. So this is actually a job listing they had posted up. Now I find this very interesting because if you've kept up with this whole Sony and Android thing, there's been leaked information, there's been a lot of things going on that point towards Sony and Google coming together with PlayStation and Android. So who knows what we can expect. Could we maybe expect the next PSP to be powered by Android? Could we possibly expect a PSP phone soon? That's definitely something to look forward to. I'm going to get more into that with my topic of the week, so definitely stay tuned. But I'm definitely interested. I have an Android phone. I'm a big fan of PlayStation, so hey, why not join them together? We'll definitely have to wait and see. Now the PS3 is getting the Netflix app, finally. It was announced this past week that it will be coming to North America in October. Along with this announcement, they announced that Netflix will be coming to Canada. So for all the Canadians out there who feel like they're missing out on things, congratulations, you're finally getting Netflix on your PS3. But for the North American users, we're finally getting an app on the PS3. So we no longer have to worry about putting that disc into the console. Now, in case, because I know people still have this question, why did they do this in the first place? Microsoft had a patent with Netflix to where they were the only company that could put an app on a game console. Well, guess what? That patent's ending, so guess what? October, we can expect the Netflix app. If it wasn't for that patent and that deal with Microsoft, it would have already been out. But due to legal t reasons and things like that, they couldn't. So definitely something to look forward to if you're a Netflix user and you use Netflix on your PlayStation 3. Now Microsoft still feels Blu-ray is not needed. They still feel Blu-ray is not needed. Microsoft basically said that they feel Blu-ray will be extinct before it's the main format for gaming. And I, when I first heard this, I'm like, wait a second. The main format for gaming? Are you talking about next generation? Because this generation... I mean, PS3, it's all Blu-ray. Yes, 360 still have DVD. We used to have DVD. But next generation, what do they expect? Well, basically what they're coming out with is, hey, it's all digital downloads. I don't care what anyone says, I'm sorry, but I have a hard time believing that next generation is going to be pure digital downloads. I really don't think that's going to be the case. Just based off the fact that people still want to have the hard copy of the game. Just like me. I prefer to have the hard copy of the game. Yes, for smaller games, hey, I'd rather only pay 10 bucks than have to pay for a game that a company had to pay to ship and things like that. But for a full blown out game such as a Halo or a Killzone, I want the hard game. Especially one of the downloads, you don't really save much money off of it. So that's definitely how I feel about it. Microsoft also feels that keeping Blu ray out of their console helped keep costs down. And yes, that's true. But look at it in a relative sense. Now, the 360 with a 4 gig, 4 gig space, storage space is $199. A PS3 with a 160 gig hard drive is $299. So, really, you should be comparing the PS3 with the 
160 gig hard drive compared to 360 Elite at the same price of 299 So is it really saving that much money? At launch, definitely. 360 launched at $400. The PS3 launched at $600. Yes, there's a big difference, but guess what? Blu-ray. That's what everyone's watching now. If they have an HD TV, they either have Blu-ray already or they're looking to get into Blu-ray because of the high definition movie format. Now, yes, you may say, oh, internet streaming. That is true. There are a few services doing 1080p streaming, but you got to realize not everyone has the fastest internet connection. Also, once again, some people, I mean, look at internet rent, at rental services. That's a great idea, but as far as owning People like to have collections. Now, yes, you can have collections that are downloadable. The problem you have there is, one, you're not saving much money. Two, most of the time, you're actually spending more money to download it than to go buy it in the store. And number three, same reason that gamers feel this way, we want the hard copy. I'm the same way with movies. I'd rather own the game, own the actual copy than just have a digital download stored on an account. So... I find that kind of interesting. Who knows? It could just be Microsoft saying this because they don't have Blu-ray right now. Or there's a lot of rumors of Microsoft considering Blu-ray for the next console. Maybe they're trying to steer people away from that. Who knows what to expect. But I think that Microsoft, that was a stupid statement. I don't know how to better else describe it. Now, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the next Assassin's Creed in the series, is going to be the third in the franchise. There was a beta announced for PlayStation Plus members this week. So, select members will be invited that are part of PlayStation Plus. Select members, that's the key part. Not every PlayStation Plus member will get in. So, even if you're a PlayStation Plus member, don't be surprised if you don't get an invite. Now, many of you guys may be like, oh, this is bullcrap, blah, 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 blah. Yes, I can understand where you're coming from, but they never said that PlayStation Plus will guarantee you in the betas. They said that you'll possibly be invited to these betas. You're going to get priority access to betas. I think that's exactly what they said. Priority access, meaning you'll get it before a non-PlayStation Plus member. Now, also the Red Faction Battlegrounds beta, that was announced a couple weeks ago. That will also be coming to PlayStation Plus members. So definitely keep an eye on for that. It's kind of interesting because ever since this PlayStation Plus came out, notice how much more exclusive content the PS3 has received. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, that beta is exclusively to the PS3. The Red Faction Battlegrounds beta, I'm pretty sure that's exclusive to the PS3. So, PlayStation Plus, I truly feel it's worth the investment. I truly do. Hey, that could only be my opinion. There may be some people that disagree with me. That's how I feel about it. But definitely look out. I'll keep you guys updated as far as when these betas come out. And if I get an invite, I'll tell you about it and I'll see if I can get more codes in. So definitely look out for that. So now before we head into my review, we've got the last piece of news this week, and it got people pretty upset. Little Big Planet 2 was delayed. Little Big Planet 2 was originally supposed to come out end of this year. No longer. Little Big Planet 2 is coming out January 18th of 2011. So don't expect Sackboy revolutionized under PS3 anytime this year. You can expect it next year. A whole lot of people got mad about this. I'm going to talk more about this on what grinds my gears. So keep, so keep in tune. So let's go ahead into my reviews for the Otterbox HTC Evo 4G Commuter Series case and the Castle Crashers review. I'll be right back. What's up everybody, this is Nick from TheGamerAccess.com providing my review of OtterBox's HTC Evo Commuter Series Case. Now if you have not heard of OtterBox, they are a leading innovator of protective cases for your valuable handheld devices. They produce high quality cases with high quality materials, which makes them arguably the best on the market. So what I have here is my HTC Evo 4G alongside the HTC Evo Commuter Case. The case retails for $34.95 and can be found on otterbox.com along with major electronic retailers such as Best Buy. The case is compiled of a screen protector, silicone mid-layer wrap, and custom molded polycarbonate shell. Currently I'm not using the screen protector which was included with the case as I currently have the invisible shield installed, but if you do not have a screen protector on already, Otterbox has you covered. As I'm showing you right now, installation is extremely easy and only takes a couple seconds. Now you may be wondering why the case is compiled of a mid-layer wrap and polycarbonate shell. And I too wondered this until I removed my older case. I previously just had a 
shell type of case which I purchased from Best Buy and when I took the case off I was presented with scratches and even some chips on the side where the case came in close contact. None of us want to see something like this happen to our precious devices and this is where OtterBox was smart. Not only does this keep your device in its original condition, but also provides additional protection if you happen to drop it. Another problem you usually occur with many cases is that it adds a bit of weight to the device. This is not the case with the OtterBox HTC Evo commuter case. Altogether, the entire protection weighs in at 1.54 ounces, hardly adding any extra weight at all. Many cases also make it difficult for access to buttons. This is where OtterBox excels. For example, the power button has an extra layer right here, easy access for the volume buttons, easy access. The previous case I had, not so simple. So OtterBox definitely excels there. The wrap also protects the ports such as the USB charging port and the micro HDMI port alongside the headphone jack. Now while this case is built extremely nice and will definitely become my primary case for my Evo, there's only one problem with the design that can be pretty irritating. While the mid layer wrap contains a plug for the headphone jack, it does not for the micro HDMI nor USB charging port causing it to be loose. I constantly find myself having to slide the cover back in to cover the ports and not hang out from the case. I give OtterBox's HTC Evo Commuter Series case a 9 out of a 10. Overall this product is a great case that provides superb protection. With more than one layer of protection alongside high quality materials, there is no debate that this is one of the best, if not the best case out for the HTC Evo 4G. I just wish they could have tweaked the covering for the micro HDMI and USB charging port.